the big bill stack. We'll keep you in the know. In the big bill stack. We'll fix your techie woes. And we'll break things and we'll make these till we're all together raking. And we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bill stack. In the big bill stack. Come and join our fire crew. In the big bill stack. We'll fix your techie woes. And we'll break things and we'll make these till we're all together raking. And we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bill stack. In the big bill stack. Come and join our fire crew. In the big bill stack. We'll show you what to do. And we'll hack it till we crack it. And we'll tell the world about it. And forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bill stack. Hello, and welcome to episode 118 of the Bilge Tank. Just about. Oh. <laughs> streaming <laughs> streaming software sucks, now. it all sucks. I want to go home. <coughs> anyway, we got there. Yep. Yep. Hurrah. Shampoo. Nothing more to say about that. Uh, so, we, no sound? No sound. Can no, what? No. He's playing with us. There's sound. I'm going to check the sound. Oh, I can't, because we have the audio going out to HDMI. Hello. Can you hear us? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Anyone? Can someone type in the chat if you can hear us? 118. Type in the chat if you can't hear us. <laughs> Phil's going to check it. <laughs> do it, do, do, do. <laughs> Phil can't type. I can't much. believe you're Can checking. someone type? Oh, yeah, okay. Can we have sound. We've got cool. sound. We're in. Okay, welcome back to the Bilge Tank. It's been ages since I've done the Bilge Tank. It has. Since before we tore down the Bilge Tank and remade the Bilge Tank in your office. <laughs> um, so it's nice now to Now it's back. the Bilge Mess. And this week we've got three exciting new oh, products. Bilge. Bilge. Uh, to show you and two of the micro bits to uh, add on to our, our new micro bit range that we're working on. What and I just can't get got? used to the camera being there as well. I keep looking up. It's very strange. In and one new, one new super awesome product for the Raspberry Pi. It's true. This, um, this is, is a new form factor for us, isn't it? Kind of. It's it's a. Uh, so should we do that first and then do the yeah, micro bit yeah, stuff? Yeah, okay. So it's basically we've, we've done a few shim products. Oh yeah, nice, Sandy. We've done a few shim products before, which things like the wide input shim, oh. the uh, lipo shim. We're working on the lipo charge shim. Uh, we've done the on off shim. We've the done the button forward. shim. Any others? Oh, but anyway, shims. Uh, one of the points of shims was that you could put them down onto your Raspberry Pi GPIO connector, and then still use the pins on the GPIO connector for other hats or add-ons. Which works nicely, but you have to solder them directly to the GPIO, which some people aren't confident with. And also, it means you can't really take it off your Pi yeah, again. It's kind of shame. irreversibly attached to your Pi, then. Yep. So this is a, a new version of the shim format that we've been working on okay. that um, uses a, a special friction fit header. Nico spent a lot of time prototyping this. I think probably our first test panels of this must have been over six months ago. Yep, and we actually, have, we actually have panels that were just the friction fit header with very <laughs> small spacing changes and kind of tolerance changes and tweaks. So we had like whole panels where everything was just a mil wider, a mil tighter, whatever. Uh, and this is what we've settled a on. Of a, a thousandth of an inch. A thousandth so of an inch. inch. Um, and it actually works really nicely. We have to be very careful with our PCB manufacturers to make sure they hit the tolerances <laughs> we need, yeah. which is fine. And we can't do high power stuff with this. So, you, so don't expect to see LiPo shim or on-off shim. Um, Working this format, but for things like uh, low power LEDs, button shim will probably update to match this. Uh, it's perfect, really. Sensors, sensors, basic yeah. sensors. So we're looking at ways that you can augment your Pi's functionality by just slipping something over the GPIO, but then carry on using it as you would normally do. Yep. So that's kind of cool. Do we have a demo Pi? We have the demo set up here with the flashy lights. Oh, do you want to put that under, the, close under the camera? Where are we? Which uh, I have oh, covered yeah, uh, in hot snot, so... <laughs> I have access to the codes on your computer, Bill. Is it in L edition? Oh, this, is, this has a port of all the blinked demos and examples that are basically just stretched Ooh. up to the... What was it? 26? 28. LEDs? 28 LEDs, in fact, of the LED shim. So it's like a super, super fine pitch, stretched, oh. blinked. Isn't it 24? What was the question? How many LEDs? 14, 14, 14, 14 28, 28, 28, I believe. Yeah. I believe. Is it really? I don't even yeah. know. <laughs> it's 28. We could, we could absolutely count them. Right. <laughs> One. So yeah, instead of the... You two, only get eight on blinked, right? They're too small. So possibly. you get like three and a half times the LEDs on this. <laughs> which is And they're really small awesome. as well. Which uh, If you stick rainbow on, you'll see it kind of uh, makes for a bit of a strange effect. Sandy described it as like a ribbon twisting. Yeah. Because of the way the the elements, oh. you can't. You can yeah, you can kind of see it there. You can see how the different colours are actually at different positions inside the pixel. So you get like this twisty ribbon effect where the uh, where kind of the colours are blending across. That's super cute. <laughs> can you take it off and then put it on again just to show the the certain mechanism? Oh, yeah. of okay. Actually, so, take that one off and put the non-snotted yeah, okay. one on there. Yeah. 
assuming that's requires functional, that you haven't bent the pins on your pie as a, a start. Although if you have bent one end or the other, you can kind of latch it over one end and, and kind of get it across. So I'm going to do this while trying to keep it on the close-up camera <laughs> without shorting anything. <laughs> oh, what could uh, go so wrong? it's easy just to get one end on first because that keeps you it in line, and then you just slip it down like that, and then okay. So now it's just barely on the pins, but as you now push it down, you can you can feel a little bit of friction tension, can't you? So yeah, if okay. I turn this upside down and go, it's not it's not going to fall off. There's definitely a little there bit of friction there. So that, the, so the idea is the the bottom row of kind of slots, the kind of right. elongated slots, because yeah. the edge of it is so thin, it flexes slightly when you put it on. Yeah, it has so it's actually yeah. slightly smaller than the pin diameter. Exactly that. And then it kind of flexes and grips onto the to the pin. You get that that bottom edge, like you say, just there's a very slight deformation in it when it's inserted onto the GPIO header, um, which is enough to hold it in place. Like Phil's showing, you know, it's it's yeah, there it's there. Go. Like I can pull his pie around <laughs> just by pulling the board. It's not yeah, going to fall off. No, oh. We should, get get, error, we should get a hat and stick a hat on this one. You've get errored it, boy. Errored it. I did. I caused an IO error. I do that regularly. <laughs> um, and it's a bit difficult to see on the camera, but in person, it's super punchy. And the little tiny LEDs are really cute. Yeah, really nice. Stuck They're really nice. Are they two millimeters square? I heard you like hat, so you put a hat on your hat. So you hat on are they two hat. millimeters square? I'm well, going to run. I'm going to run the rainbow example in the background, so we can also run unicorn hat HD. In the foreground, I've yeah. heard that we have this guy who makes these cracking one-line installers. So let's yeah. see how that works. Give that a go. A GitHub. To the GitHub. So this is not necessarily ideal for putting above a unicorn hat HD. No, it's perfect for you, that film. You've already got. <laughs> Everyone wants more LEDs. LEDs. You're a fool. <laughs> You're well, a darn fool. If you've got sensors or buttons or some kind of input, then this is okay. a great way to add status oh. display to that kind of thing. Maybe as a you know, like your temperature and your pressure or something. Yeah, yeah or even a, a color. Perfect for CPU. CPU yeah. yeah, CPU usage. But you could do things like memory usage, load, and Kind of, you know, various yeah, aspects got of your computer all, in different all, colors. All manner of stuff. And of course, <clears> someone can do a binary clock on here. There's always room for binary clocks. There it is. What have we got in the chat? <laughs> oh, Tanya's off to make a fair. She's just got on the plane. And she's also complimenting your vicious haircut, Sandy. Yep. He's super aerodynamic today. Buzz cut, Sandy. He's uh, basically very optimistic about the weather over the coming weeks. Yeah, <laughs> my train this morning actually got in five minutes early because we were so much faster. Because, because of uh, your haircut. <laughs> yeah. That explains it now. Yeah. I know you were surprised by that. But yeah. Um, so as you can see, the uh, Unicorn Hat HD is 16 by 16. So based on that, you can see how much more dense the LEDs on the shim are. There's 28 going across in roughly the same space. Uh, and the pixels are actually smaller, I think, that. They're not two millimeters square. These They're are two point five by two point five mil. And these Which I ones? Believe, the, are, yeah, those, yeah. And these, I think they're, they're two one mil square. They are. They're super mm -hmm. tiny. Phil, that one line installer does it put stuff in Pimeroni? Yep. Did you? Thank uh, you. Uh, it did not. What do I do? Just clone the uh, GitHub repo. Ah, uh, okay. I imagine you didn't say yes to install all the things. Git clone. So I just gave you the library. Alright. Oh, do do clone or download HTTPS. Why would you not just know the URL? Oh, come on! I know it, but I'm too lazy and I just want to cut and paste it. Paste. I think Les has <laughs> just compared me to Sinead O'Connor, I believe. Ah. <laughs> don't know if that's a compliment or <laughs> probably what? not. I think that's a compliment. Right. A bit of that. I'm going to shield my eyes. Let's see if we can blind fill. So, blind fill dot exe. <laughs> I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play Rainbow again. So you got Rainbow plus Rainbow, and that makes more rainbows. How do you like a Rainbow? Everyone loves a rainbow. Rainbow, rainbow. Whoa! Whoa. There you go. So that's kind of crazy. But yeah, as Phil says, it's probably better used not with <laughs> the Unicorn Hat HD. Uh, makes a really nice little indicator. Cool. That's kind the, of fun. Uh, rolling shutter effect is pretty. <laughs> pretty, bu yeah, strong with that, isn't it? Uh, really the interesting is. thing about LED shim is it's actually using the same driver chip as the Scroll Fat HD. So it's effectively a scroll for HD mm. in a linear format with the RGB elements rather than individual white pixels or other colours now. Mm. So that is pretty cool. That strobing effect <coughs> is crazy strong. Of course, if you, wanna, if you want to now, if you want to solder it, you can solder it as well. Um, you can. You can. Or you could solder a, a female header to the bottom and turn it into like a something like a blind. You um, could, and also it's um, it's just I squared C. 
right? So I mean, you could hook yeah, it up to an Arduino. You, you could out, yeah. um, tie it to a feather. Oh, we, we should have all sorts of uh, like standard phrases for these. <laughs> tie it to a feather. Tie it to a feather. Whatever. We could have like a song. It'd be brilliant. Um, so that's LED shim. It's available in store right now for seven pounds fifty, uh, and it's kind of fun Super and great if you don't want to solder anything and just want to have a play. So solder-free fun. Can you turn that off, Bill? It's, it's messing with my brain. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Sorted. Fix that for you. Uh, next up, we'll have a quick look at the two things separately first, and then we can do some demos because there's some pretty cool stuff you can do when you have more than one micro bit. So the first up this is one we've already. This is already. We already know that one, Bill. Let's go so to the. Week. Let's go and walk Enviro? through Enviro bit. Yeah. Enviro bit because I love the silk and it Ooh, makes me so wonder. happy. And there's nothing on the Let's camera. Let's get an extreme close up. We've it's huge. Basically, not going to breathe. Oh, no, right now. oh, oh yeah. yeah. So, Sweet. Oh, God. what you're looking at. <laughs> Let's run through what's on the Envirobit first, and yeah, then we'll okay. talk about what's Let's on the. Let's go to close up. We've got another Envirobit somewhere I can use for. Uh, Stunt Envirobit. Here we go. Stunt bit! It's um, <laughs> fairly self describing because of this really lovely silk. Really it is. Lovely. And. So, but there's some nice features here. So it's, effectively, we were looking at EnviroFat, which has been very popular, and we were thinking, how do we take this to microbit format, make it a bit more accessible, uh, do some improvements? Because I think what we found with EnviroFat is what's the third sensor? <laughs> it was the motion, motion. Motion. We found people fact. weren't really using motion, and we were kind of struggling to come up with good use cases for it. So we, we figured, let's kill the motion sensor, also, put Microbit sound on there Also, has a motion sensor on board, also, so Microbit has, highly has redundant. got that. And, and EnviroFat has a four-channel ADC, but Microbit's got ADC channels ADC anyway, channel so we don't need do. those. Um, so instead, what we did is we took the BME280, so that's an upgrade from the EnviroFat, yeah. which has the BMP280, and that's temperature, humidity, and pressure. Very cool. Uh, we put the colour sensor on, which is TCS exactly the same one. TCS3472, Thank you, Phil. And we put on a uh, MEMS microphone with gain amplifier, which is, uh, I can't remember what the part is, but it's its basically a, a MEMS microphone. Yeah. So you can do quite cool kind of noise activated events, you can do light or colour activated you events, can finally and you can get do those environmental clap, monitoring. Clap triggering lights you always wanted. <laughs> Meme review. Oh, Phil spent a day just like this over his desk testing, and every every time anyone yeah. walked past, Drive they were like, "People crazy." The, be the best one was he actually played the the YouTube video of um, oh, not the, the of Shia LaBeouf. Oh, that's it. <laughs> right <laughs> at the end, <laughs> yes. and, it, and it triggered it. it I still it think we shy. should make that an advertisement. <laughs> Turn we the just lights need on Shia. We just stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> we just need to license. Shia LaBeouf's image, but that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, yeah, so very, very cool. Really nice set of features on there. Plug straight into the micro bit. Uh, it's, it's, you know, runs within the micro bit's power budget. It's, as you'd expect, fills them some great code libraries for it for make code and micro Python <coughs> yes. on the micro bit. I fully recommend make code as a way to go with uh, I, I gotta say, doing libraries for basically anything the, on the micro bit. Micro Python is so restricted on the micro bit, it makes it hard to achieve a great deal, doesn't it? Indeed, yeah. Whereas make code <coughs> is pretty darn slick. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, sorry for the so headphone what, viewers. What we're looking at down oh. here on the microscope is in fact the colour sensor. Um, and you don't have to look closely because we've already done that with the microscope. But you'll see on the uh, die of the colour sensor, there's actually a grid of little windows and you'll count Actually, the clear ones currently look blue, but those are clear, honest. If you tweak where these... It's, it's really you, zoomed in, so it's very twitchy. Well, but so if you can see by clear four, doesn't it? Yeah, it's basically a tiny it's little CCD. Me, okay. It's a 3 by 4 matrix sensor, but then they put the filters over oh, the top to, get off the desk to capture the like different colours of light. So through. you've got blue, red, blue, blue, green, blue, red, blue, red, green, I think blue, oh, it's green. To the... The top three <laughs> are clear, red, clear. Uh, okay. So the clear yeah. gives you your total ambient light level, and then you can your scale looks. your individual colour levels against that to get the proportional amount of any given colour. Yeah, nice. Which, uh, just lets you convert it into like a RGB colour value or something. <coughs> that. So when you when you talk to it, you basically pull off uh, a red, green, blue, and clear. Clearly. Colour value, don't you? And then there's some crazy calculations to convert that into looks, I think, if you want to use it as a, a looks reading. Luxury. Shall we get out of the zoomed camera because it wobbles every time we touch the table? It's crazy. But it's kind of interesting back. to look at how the sensor's structured. It's, uh, we should have yeah, had a cool close look at LED shim, actually, while we're at it. <laughs> um, so that is the Envirobit, which is 
uh, fully assembled, no soldering required as usual with our microbit stuff, and that's £20 and available now. So that's pretty Ooh, yep. cool. And as usual, Sandy's written a really nice product description which tells you the individual part numbers of the things that are on there, so you can go and look at more information about them if you like. But generally, with our microbit stuff, we try to make it super accessible so you don't really need to worry about that kind yep. of thing. So it's we'll be make, know. a make code library for all of our microbit boards. Um, Except for that, the ones that don't need a library. Has that been accepted? Like, not the, the Envirobit one yet. Okay. You basically need to paste the GitHub URL into make code in order to get hold of that library at the moment. So there's a so manual way to import it, but is, it will yeah, actually go into like, the common library set. It will end up into the, the common library point. set where you can search it. In fact, we, while we're looking at this, should we quickly go into make code and read yeah, something on the sensor? Phil's going to show us. Oh no, Phil wants to go noisy. That's right, you can go noisy. Bum, 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 bum. That's... Let's do something with noise bit, and then we'll come back around right. to micro bit, and we'll show okay. we'll show what we've got set up here over the. Radio. Do you want to show the noise bit let's just, off then? Let's show the noise bit off to get the there new products go. out of the way. Do, 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 do. We'll go back to let's go back to the product page the noise, noise bit. bit. Uh, so <laughs> it doesn't take a genius to figure out that we've uh, made the micro bit the face, and turned noise bit into a shouty mouth. Shouty mouth, <laughs> um, which is kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, the Mac. micro bit is known for its audio file grade <laughs> sound quality. <laughs> so yeah. we've we've you great. know the yeah, size of the valves system. on the back of this thing is impressive, but yeah, no, it's yeah. it basically nice. it's PWM audio. It's great for some bleeping, some blooping. Uh, it's great for scaring people and, and drunk Dalek sound effects. Drunk Dalek in, sound effects is good. Piping. Uh, generally being annoying. So, so you're going cool. to live code us some happy bleepy sounds. Should we try that? Should we try and have a go? If you have a look at, actually have a look at the back, it's kind of cool uh, that it has the integrated speaker. So, you know, the, this is the whole thing. You don't need to plug your headphones into it. You don't need to attach it to another speaker or anything like that. It's literally, you plug it on and boom, away you go. And it's the same little speaker as our speaker phone. Exactly the same speaker, totally different amp chip because it's not I2S audio, it's just PWM yeah. audio, but we have a little audio filter on there and a little amplifier. I think it's 0 0.3 watts. Again, to keep it within the micro bit power budget, you're only allowed 90 milliamps for an add on, so you yeah. have to be very careful about that. The first roll of this uh, used a little bit too much power and I was holding it, and my finger went, hey, that's getting a hey, little it's bit quite hot. warm in here. So I'm going to try and do something. So this really is the speaker is supplied installed on. <laughs> oh no, that's an event thing, isn't it? I'm, yeah. I am so rubbish at this. You have no idea. Right, let's play mm -hmm. that. So when you press the A button, Phil, in a moment, it should play a middle C. And then I'm going to add you another one I'm while you're doing that. I keep twisting it round. Hold on. And B button. Is it going to work? Do, 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 do. Okay, on B button. Press A to beep. On B button, we're going to get a middle D. Dink. Or whatever that is, and then I'm gonna have when you press both of them. Can you could you change them to be a quarter of a beat? Yeah, I can. I can attempt to do that. Though I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah cool. This make code thing's pretty cool. It, it is uh, like Python is very good for rapid prototyping and playing with sensors and stuff that you might need. <laughs> I swear to C to talk with and, and mm -hmm. complicated stuff. Make code is really good for actually getting stuff done. You're on. Both buttons together. Oh, you can play the start of Frere Jacca, and that's about it. Wicked. <laughs> that was almost sad. Mary had a little lamb. Uh, who can change tempo? Play tone. Start melody. I know it's merrily we roll along, isn't it? Yeah. Da -da -dum, da -da -dum, ba ding. What is this? <laughs> that, was a, that was my oh, Brett Domino for the day. That's some blues. So if you do A B, it should start melody blues, repeating once. Whatever that means. Is it not the USB? Is it flashed? I'm pressing all the buttons at the same time. Snarf. No, is it, is it going, is it going, is it going, is it going, 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 going. Oh, there's a good example of how Scrollbit integrates into no, it's, it's make code. We'll have a look at that in a second, actually. Beep, 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 beep. Whoa, nice. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> 
yeah, let's not do that anymore. Oh, right. did you did you him. show the scroll bit stuff not, on here? I haven't got this code. Yeah, on we there did that because it's there. stored within my uh, browser. No, no, but have you, you you've shown this? Stuff? Yeah, we did that. Oh, cool. Yeah, All right, okay. that's pretty sweet stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah excellent. So, so we that can add, we can add the EnviroBit library. Oh, we could do that. Do okay, that, so yeah. how do I add the EnviroBit library to here, Phil? So I'm in I'm in Make Code at the moment. Should we get rid of the close-up camera? Do we need any close-up? Oh. <laughs> Inception. Camera in camera. There's always a camera in camera so, error. You click advanced. Mm hmm. Beep. I'm just looking for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got yeah. it. Scroll down to see all your advanced functions and click add, add package. package. And then you're going to need to type in the GitHub URL, which is just HTTP. Or you can find it. Was well, it Envirobit? Was it? It is pxt Envirobit. Envirobit being all one word. Ah, there it is. So these PXT repos are special for yes, make, for make code. code. So do I just want that so that repo URL? PXT is the yep. the toolkit do that I want? is used to build make code. So yeah, you grab that repo URL, cool, verbatim, and verbatim. you paste it into there and click the little magnifying glass button. Surge, and it'll be like bam. This oh. is a user provided package. So longer term, that will actually be yeah. part of their package manager, yeah, and you just, just search and buy a bit, and oh, right. there it goes. Which Sweet. is very much how scroll bit works at the moment. So have we got an environment Grab plugged it. in? We have. That's just power, isn't it? This. We can yank it we can, off here well, for we the can, time being. We can get another one, can't we? Demo this one up. Yeah. So we, we have one here. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> we have one here. Okay, uh, so... Uh, come on, get rid of all this. Get rid of all this. Get rid of all this. So we've actually got a scroll bit set up that's going to graph whatever we send Ooh. to it over the radio. So maybe we should do a bit of radio fun times. If I turn this one off... So... Okay, Any number so, right. that you send over radio channel one, yeah, which should be ideally between zero and six, okay, will get plotted on <coughs> this scroll bit, Oop. which I'm totally failing to show in the. Oh, do you want to get on close up? Yeah, it's just. I'm totally. I mean, I'm guessing how to do this because I don't know. But let's see. Let's see if I can figure. So out what this we out. started with, while oh, items going fumbling, me. is uh, do, 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 do. we connected an Avira bit. Yeah. We connected an Avira bit to a micro bit, and it's sending the readings from the microphone over radio, and that reading is getting plotted on scroll bit. So if I now talk into it, need this one, don't I? You, you should be able to see my voice. Do things. What's that equals Ooh. thing? Do you think? That oh, that's be, the name of the item. If you just drag the get temperature ah, like, onto the arrow, that'll never that'll hover. It. You yeah. might want to divide get temperature by something or offset it. Otherwise, it's just going to absolutely max out the the Dubri what's it. So is this going onto the graph? It's going to be like twenty two degrees. So you're going to want to subtract four. twenty from it. Right, I think. So do I need to put that in the variable first then to modify it or? So yeah, you want to set item to get like temperature. This. If you just go to well, math. you can actually set get temperature. Yeah, if you just go to math, math and then uh, okay. get one of them divided by. Divided by. So it's get temperature divided by four. Yeah. yeah. And then I can get rid of this. We no, not that, that bit. Not that bit. Divided by. Yeah, that you bit. can do what you like. It's your make code. <laughs> it's your make uh, code. You don't need to put while true in the forever loop because the forever loop is already implicitly a while true. I just like to have a loop in my loop, though. What can I, I say? I heard you like loops, so I've got a loop in your loop, so you could loop while you loop. We'll see what happens. So, so this this is actually setting up a radio group, and then from this micro bit taking readings, transmitting them over radio to Ooh. other devices in the same radio group. You need to send number, Ooh, not send value item. Send so number, go to, okay. Go to radio, so I should have explained that. And send radio number. send number and stick your So is this like a key value pair or something? Yes. Ah, so you can okay. send a key value pair over radio so that your... Other end knows what you're actually sending. Client micro bit can actually send different readings, different reading values, or commands, or controls, all sorts of things. Is it on there? Is what on there? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. super easy to get up and running, but I can't it help but imagine what might happen if you did this in a classroom with dozens and dozens of micro bits. Okay. So why is the spinny spinner spinning? The spinny spinner is spinning because the spinny spinner is spinny spinning. It has spinning. been spinning, spinning forever, spinning. Phil. Do I Bear see? in mind, this is a pre-release of the desktop version of this software, so there may be bugs. Okay, so can I do a thing to save this and quit have it? Go? It should save, but yeah. uh, click the projects with oh, the yeah. But it it auto save as untitled anyway. 
Oh, we didn't get the uh, pirate tune playing on speaker bit. <laughs> And then that did, 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 did. We probably, probably saved that. something, did it? Did we save this whole fight? Yeah. And you, what do you reckon? Just kill it and it is supposed kick to it off again. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. Make her. <laughs> oh, Cortana. <laughs> what is wrong with the world? Oh, dear. <sighs> Make code. Bam. Okay, so nope. I go to Le Projects. John's. It's already opened your amazing project. Oh, my word. It knows it's preempted you. It knows what you want. It knows what you want from the world. Clever micro bit. So now it's flashing onto here. So hopefully, at any second now, we should see. Beep, beep. So what's twenty-two divided by four? Uh, it's so like a number. Success. It's a number. It is a number. So we might have to beep, beep. to offset that a little bit. I think the temperature. Right. Is. It reckons it's downloaded. Ooh, expected. You think. It. Streaming values over to the forever radio mm -hmm. send number get temperature divided by four radio set group one in start. Yeah, you radio. Gonna restart that one. It's not radioing. Is that one doing something? Yeah, I reckon if I plug my other one back in, it's gonna be like bow all over again. Which ones were where? See that one. Oh, is it doing it now? Oh, that one's talking to that one. That one's talking, but that one should also be able to talk to that one. I'm sure I use group one. Try again. Reflash your code. Radio said number get temperature divided by four. Should we just send a fixed number and see what happens? We can do, yeah. Send the number six. Can I just pull this three. bit out and kind of leave it yeah. dangling? Just send number yeah. three. Cool. And see what happens. Yeah, I can see it flashing. It's blinking the LEDs. But they don't, it doesn't want to talk to it. So it can, this one it can talk, this one it can talk to. <coughs> is it, is it a a micro bit colour thing. Does that count? What colour they are? No. Should it? Mm -hmm. it shouldn't it? So should it? Mm, don't know. Try this one. Try that bit. Try that bit. Switch your bit. Chomping at the bit. Do 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 do. I don't know. There could be some caveats with the radio. Oh. Not. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Is that the temperature sensor? What? Where? This one. No, it's that. It's, it's running, running the wrong code, it's right? Yes. Wrong code. Yeah. So if I try and download it and to this one now, new code. Oh, 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 oh! Sorry, oh, hold on, on one go second. On. I just had the horrible realization of what's going wrong. You've got the scroll bit library still. Yeah. In this project. Yeah. That is trying to launch the scroll bit library when the code runs. So how do I get rid of Expecting this? Expecting there to be a scroll bit and going. Yeah. I don't actually know. <laughs> just create a new project. Okay, yeah, just the right idiot. Ah. New project. Okay. Luckily, we haven't got a huge amount of code. I think it was four lines. Just so we do set group that's a one. Bit of a got you. There's got to be a a sensible way around that. So you need what we might need is like you've got radio set group here, almost like a, a scroll yeah, bit knit totally or something. Yeah, I totally wanted to, to avoid that, but I, I can see why. Have to be a yeah. thing. Okay, so we're doing send number. And we need to do. bring in our environment library still. Yeah. Hopefully, she's still on your clipboard. Uh, fingers crossed. It is. Yes. yes. How did coding. Adafruit get that default search result every single time? Guaranteed That's amazing. <laughs> the Adafruit. <laughs> Fire a bit. A um, awesome what was it getting? Te temperature, wing. wasn't it? But I was putting it in a math. What's it? To but do subtract yeah. twenty from it. That sounds distinctly like a magic number Phil. <laughs> it's not a magic Explain number. Explain your working. I, I theorise it's approximately 22 degrees in here. Oh, it's so you want to get it down degrees. to about 3 so it so, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I want to get it in the okay. range 0 to 6. So should we go for it? That seems like a sensible range. Go! Colour of micro bit means now, apparently. So what? Oh, we need this one on camera. 100% now. It's doing the... Uh, Take a spinny spinny in the download. It is. Oh, it's finished. Oh, finished. finished. Oh, oh, oh. oh, it's Yay. doing something. Apparently, it's a bit too warm in too here, warm. though. Blowing it. Make it colder. I might have underestimated the temperature slightly. So it's 26 degrees? It's, it, yeah, it could be. <laughs> you flap it around in the breeze, Phil. What? I'll put my Number incredibly cold getting. fingers on it. Can I put the. Temperature somewhere. Oh, oh, oh it's changed. It just went up. It just yeah. went up. I think you should subtract 24 from it. Wait, bowl? 
Or 25. 24 or 25. <laughs> okay. Download. This rating. is incredibly scientific. It also makes for great internet TV. <laughs> It's called oh, like a slow TV. TV so it's now, called slow TV. Yeah. Yeah. Just chill out. Oh. When I when I put Have my finger coffee. on the temperature sensor and warm it up, assuming my finger's warm enough to warm it up. Dunk. 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 Oh, there we go. Historically, Dunk. my fingers generally make it colder, so this might take a while. Hold on. So if you added like a delay of maybe a second in there, then the graph would be more kind of like. Uh, over time, kind of thing. Yeah, going yeah, up yeah. And down at the oh, there we go. Yeah, Saturated. Yeah, we could do that, couldn't we? So if we put in trouble with temperature, is it doesn't fluctuate all that much here. So, so what so. we what we really want to do is expand the scale of the temperature range. So minus twenty four did help, didn't it? Minus twenty six, but then maybe times that by two <coughs> to kind of. Double. Is it a floating point number, Phil, or is it in? It's Hintergur. always a decimal number. It's oh, it's decimal. No right, floating point available decimal, in decimal Makers at the moment. But decimal's absolutely acceptable. And then we want a slow down thing. How do you do that then? Basic yes. and then That's pause. half the reason why the temperature pause. sensor is so sticky. And we'll do it for half a second. Just Ooh, to get it colder. We're getting it colder. Downloading. Heat sink. Heat My Fitbit's sink. telling me to go for a walk. Hmm. We have been sitting down. Oh. oh yeah, that's updating more slowly now. It's a bit hard to see that in the lighting, isn't it? <laughs> I am your father. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, it is stepping up in twos though, isn't it? It's not treating it as a decimal, it's treating it as an int, I think. But yes, there you go, you can see kind is. of like a temperature graph. You could do that way better than we did. But, yeah. <laughs> it's a thing, and that's what matters. Um, but I think now that we got, when we had the first add-on that we did, the scroll bit, that was kind of cool, we kind of enjoyed that. As soon as we had some other ones, suddenly the things you could do if you had two micro bits and two add-ons, immediately, like, there's loads of ideas you can do, like uh, alarms for sound sensors. We, we had, had some clapping demo or something, We had a uh, theremin. Oh, how do we make the theremin? Can we make that do something? <coughs> we, could, we could make a theremin. The trouble is the theremin speaker side of the code is really complicated. So. You could, um, oh. Maybe I'll go over and flash it. You could do almost like a kind of rubbish walkie talkie bit. thing with um with Enviro bit and noise bit. Go on. So like you could like you could clap Meme review. at the Enviro bit and then De decode make, it as Morse on the other make end. Make the other one yeah, you could <laughs> yeah, do more, like, you could do more code, yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably could. But I mean things like um being able to run an Enviro bit doing your monitoring and then a scroll bit Sounds putting the values so on the screen, yeah. that's kinda oh, cool. That's, that's uh, uh, a kind of an entry system into a a room or whatever, like an alarm, proximity sensor, have yeah, the noise bit go off and make some noise. A baby monitor, you could do like a baby monitor. That'd be cool, though we don't endorse yeah. you actually relying on that as a no, system, no, no. you know, but as, yeah. as a proof of concept. Um, and things like using the weather sensors, if you want to trigger when you hit a certain temperature, you can just then transmit over to, say, a noise bit to set off an alarm. So there's all sorts of kind of cool things you can do. I think we should totally have a play with making like a two-player Pong where you have to hold your micro bits together yeah, and yeah. play across two different scroll bits. That would be yeah. pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, this make code stuff's pretty cool. I've got a theremin client here. Have you? The theremin project's very complex. It's client server. It's all Node.js, I think. <laughs> <laughs> So. It runs in the cloud. You couldn't, you couldn't write the server. Here's the speaker bit. Okay, what do I? What, what am I connecting it to? I am sending a number <laughs> that corresponds to the note that you need to play. Okay, so I need to program this to do that on Radio Group One, yeah. Yes. Okay. And you should set the BPM to 360 and play the note at 160. I think to get. Oh boy. Okay, so Radio Very Group musical, One. Very precise. And then in the loop. Do I have some sort of radio event then? When I, oh, when I receive number, yeah? And then I do a music play tone 1 16th, do you say? And the number yep. is going to be received number. Ah, go away. I might have to adjust the client. You have to, you have to go to play. variables on the thing. Then, yeah. Ah, so it kind of creates you these as you've allocated yep. them or whatever. Yep. So forever, no, I'm on radio the, receive, uh, play this tone. Let's just try that and see what happens. It's scroll bit wrong. over here is going to be going loopy. Le scroll bit. You should be able to have two clients. 
Oh, sorry. Oh, oh no, it's doing this. Doing scroll bit is uh, doing the flashing thing. lighting up. When oh, we flashed. So is this right? Oh. oh. Woo. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Well, you can make it play itself, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> How meta. Oh dear. I like it. Yeah, there is. That is pretty cool, in actually. Mus oh. <coughs> in music, there is a. Oh, set sorry, tempo. I forgot that bit. I was trying to remember all the instructions. So. Can go oh, slider. Like three... This yeah, will you... just make it respond a lot more quickly, right? Yeah, you'll get yeah. it. Yeah, smoother time. Five eight is close enough. Okay, let's flash that puppy. Flash that puppy! Rave starts now. Techno, techno, techno. It's very good, Phil. I'm cutting you off. <laughs> No! No, why me? It's not possible. Okay, that is that 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 was cool. We liked that. They worked very nicely together. It just um, shows you how fast the radio is as well for just transmitting relatively high yeah. frequency data over there. Because it's definitely it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, we've been we've, we're playing with quite a few micro bit add-on formats, and certainly the the, the displays are ideal for uh, transmitting a bit of data over to show on on the display basically. Well I had a client on here that when it received an H it would show humidity followed by the number. Okay. When it received a T it would show temperature followed by the number. Etc ah, etc. Et so you funny. could from a client you could periodically send it over the temperature pressure humidity readings and they just scroll along the scroll bit. So Beautiful. And you could do all that from make code. You don't have to write any code, you, you can use the editor. Code, cool. Clip it together and make code. It's super super cool. Or you can use MicroPython but there's very little RAM Left on the microbit. It's quite tricky to do anything program. meaningful with Envirobit on MicroPython because you've got three libraries for the sound, colour, light, and air, and mm -hmm, weather. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you start trying to piece them together, it goes, ah, I'm out of memory. Yeah. But you yeah, could use one at a time. You could certainly use one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. We it's, might be able to trim that down a bit as well, but it's, been it's, it's always going to be a bit, aggressively of, a, a bit of a struggle, isn't it? It is uh, um, quite crazy. Yeah. So that was Noise Bit, which is available also today for twelve pounds. And it's yeah, it's good fun. Good fun for getting a bit of input out, <laughs> a little bit of output. It's your cool projects. in Python with the, the voice synthesizer. It's very cool. Oh the Dalek thing. Yeah. Can we do that from Mako? You can't, can you? I don't know actually. I don't, I don't think, think they've got the voice no. stuff. But yeah, you can do the Dalek poetry and <laughs> it's uh, it sounds horrible <laughs> to be honest. Oh dear. Um, but, like but you could have a um, like flash Dalek poetry. You can well. do the radio stuff with MicroPython as well, so you can mm -hmm. conceivably mm -hmm. have <coughs> an enviro bit and a noise bit with the noise bit kind of speaking Ooh, temperature values or something yeah, like that. Could. That'd be quite cool. It is rather warm in here yeah. today. Yeah. What are you doing, Phil? I'm, I'm Daleking. Are you up? getting a Dalek hex? Oh, oh you, you madman. Uh, also new in the store is the Spartan Gator Bits, which is kind of an interesting all singing, all dancing micro bit accessory with massive crocodile clip pads around the edges. It's got some colourful LEDs, it's got its own power input. I think there's a little speaker on there. Um, yeah, I think it's just like a big activity board, so that's, that's kind of fun. Uh, and I think we've added a couple other things. Yeah, the Bit Commander from Fortronics, which is like a little console style thing for your micro bit. Uh, he's also got the angle bit, which is simple but very cunning, uh, that takes your micro bits edge connector and just rotates it 90 degrees, which is good if that's what you need. Yep. Yeah. And there's okay, the um, iFix it screwdriver kits as we, well. We do have the Manta driver kit and the Mahi driver kit, which are just massive uh, driver kits. The Manta comes with two drivers, so there's like a large driver and a small driver, but 112 different bits 
and the Mahi, I think, yeah, it's a single driver, and that comes with 48 bits. And So I, that, that's ideal. like the, the one that we had before, but with a kind of chunkier handle and bigger a bits. Chunkier on driver on it, yeah, I think so. It's, yeah. They're really nice kits, though, and they have the magnetic lids, so you, you don't have to mess around with them. They just kind of, the lid pops off and clicks back on again really nicely. I love how the lids have little, it's like a grid of little sections as well, so if you're like mm -hmm. dismantling your iPhone to put a new battery in it, you can take out the screws in order, like all the ones from the outside, and oh, put them in one section, yeah. and then when you get to the next bit, take those screws out, put them in a, another little section, and kind of like it's almost like everything up. those so. magnetic project mats. But yeah, you've got nice yep. little wells to put all the pieces you're taking out. Yep. Someone on chat is grumbling about how uh, everyone using Raspberry Pis and micro bits isn't actually learning any low level fundamentals. Eh, you know, if people want to go further with this stuff, they can do it. So, you know, it's, it's up to you. <laughs> Who needs to That's learn low-level fundamentals, though? Is well, some people do. Some well, people do, quite, but yeah, you certainly don't I, need I, to start I with. I must argue my case that I've learned low-level fundamentals by playing with this stuff and, and getting interested. And kids Absolutely. can't dive straight into registers because they're boring and complicated whereas if you teach them this level of stuff the kids who care about the lower level of stuff will explore into it and, and delve into it well, the thing is though it does teach us like concepts like loops and conditionals and the variables the programming side yeah absolutely it it's all about yeah. and all jamming the thin thing. end of the wedge in rather than the thick end because well the point is what you're trying to do easier. is make something that is more accessible to a larger number of people to get them started and then see if they have that spark of interest and they want to take it's it like further, a conversion funnel, they can it? yeah, well, kind of. It and the good thing is the limitation of things like make code mm -hmm. is like a, a motivation for people to move on to more advanced things like MicroPython mm -hmm. because it is limited, good. and they're like, "But I want I to, I want, to I want to do that." Yeah, yeah. And then the answer to that is, "Well, I have to move on to MicroPython, so well, I have to learn how to do that." And it almost solves two problems, doesn't yeah. it? Because the restrictions are what keep you on Rails at the start, so that you don't kind of just get frustrated and want to throw it all away because nothing works but equally yep. like you say the more you progress down that track um, the more the restrictions are holding you back and you want to look for, for yep. more flexible ways to do things which is great um, but you know they're saying that kids <laughs> need to know how assembler and how registers work which is patently untrue because most <laughs> processes are far too complicated to even get close to talking to that kind of thing but there you go you know. ever. <laughs> well pretty much um, but you know, if you have an interest for this stuff, you'll look into it and go into it deeper, and there's no problem with that at all. Uh, did we have anything else to say today? Um, I don't think so. More microbit stuff coming of course. soon. Of course, always. Yeah, yeah we've got, we got some bits and pieces. Line. As usual. Um, Phil's been toying around with uh, new colour versions of the inky bit, which are kind of fun. Oh, yeah, I was, um, so was uh, Twitch streaming, me basically prodding at the registers and updating this way, and... And John was berating me for having a <laughs> licensed copy of um, IV Cam. I called him a cheap. Which I, I then went and licensed because it was. I cool. shamed you into buying it. <laughs> um, so there's black and white and yellow, black and white. And the, red over. Yeah, so our current one is uh, red, black, white, and that's cool. You know, it's, uh, that's that's always cool. Um, but we found a yellow version of the panel as well. Uh, so yellow, black, white, and we've also got the higher resolution black, white version as well coming. So uh, they'll all be basically the same form factor as an inky bit, uh, inky fat, and you'll have uh, modifications to our code library so you can kind of well, say you which version say, you're I'm using. I'm using a yellow one, therefore use the LUTs that correspond to the yellow exactly one. Exactly, because they, they all get look. driven slightly differently, like the the, the way the, the displays work is they basically have a matrix of electrodes that drive voltages to the various different pixels on the screen, but the way it does that voltage driving is slightly different depending on the inks yeah, that are used in the Physically dragging particles of ink up and down within yeah. a suspension inside the display, which is uh, uh, an interesting concept to get your head around when you're trying to program what's effectively electronics, the and there's a physical process there happening to, to change the state of the display. It's a very analogue thing, isn't it? Um, but the nice thing about the black and white version is the updates are much faster, right? They can be super, super fast mm -hmm. at the cost of image retention, mm -hmm. and then you can slow them down and do... Like you you know when you're using an e-book reader, for example, and you turn a page, and it'll turn the page very quickly, but every five pages or so, it'll, it'll do, do like a full wipe yeah. to uh, wipe out any image retention. And you can do the same with the, 
just your black and white e-ink display. So there's a very good YouTube video called uh, what is it? Hacking e-ink uh, displays of basically yeah. overdriving them and showing like moving stuff across the display, yeah. like full animation and stuff, and just showing how far you can go. There is some crazy stuff you can do. I think we can actually get grayscales out of the black and white one as well by doing certain yeah. things. So like actually, that. if you use the um, you use the color version, the code for the red, black, white one yeah. with the black and white one, then you do actually get the. I mean, you get white, black, and kind of white, somewhere in gray. between one half bit yeah. color, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Away from me, um, so that's kind of cool. So yeah, you can expect to see. I think they're they're going to be available pretty soon as well. Aren't they? We're just tweaking mm. the, tweaking the code and then just get them making up on the, the yellow look yellow and not kind of. Yeah. It's gray, kind of an it's yellow. kind of an interesting yellow because it comes it's out. It's a little bit gold. murky, a little bit goldish, and it's yeah. It's it does look it's great. It's really hard to right move image. the yellow without dragging the black along for the ride as well. So mm -hmm. that's a, that's a trick to bring the yellow up while keeping the black down. Is there? Yeah, it's difficult. Anyway, yeah. I think that's all we have for you today. Indeed. Thank you to Sandy. Thank you to Phil. Ooh. And we'll see you next week for episode 119. Is Paul back for next week's one? 17? No, you, no, 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 he won't. You'll be in Berlin. 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 So, you're not, you're not in Berlin. I'm not in Berlin. You're not in Berlin. Phil's from I'm Berlin. also not in Berlin. So we're probably doing it again next week. Yep. Cool. We'll, we'll try and see you next week. Find something interesting. See you next time. Bye. 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 Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, yeah.